Hey everybody, welcome back. Now it's time to give some love to beginners and early game players with the top three early game builds that I played and I consider to be really strong, versatile, and easy to set up early on to pave your way to success in Elden Ring, from mid game to late game and beyond. I'll cover what class you need to pick when starting the game, what attributes you need, weapons, spells, incantations, armor, talisman, and where to get them to make it the strongest build possible early game. So stick around and let's get started. Quick note before we start is that some items or locations for these builds might contain some spoilers if you're just starting the game, but know that all the items on the build showcase are from the early map areas. So we start with the early game build number three, and it's the Mage or Caster build, focused mainly in spells and the occasional sword attack. The way to play this build is very simple. Uh, you wanted to rely heavily on your spells on foot or on horse, using primarily one spell above all others because of the great damage and the great distance that it has. Also, you have other spells in your arsenal to do AoE damage and long range damage. Equip as well with the sword and shield, you can do a little up close combat against easier enemies if needed. For challenging fights, you can summon your wolves and get the enemy's attention while you burn them with your main spell. Always maintaining your distance because the spell is a bit slow and if you get charged, you need time to roll out of the way. Be sure to have at least 4 or 5 FP flasks uh, because you can burn through your FP really quick and you don't want to teleport back all the time to a site of grace to replenish them or what's worse, run out of FP during a boss fight. So how do you create this powerful build? First, you will start the game selecting the Astrologer class because it has more intelligence and mind than the other classes and those are the main attributes for a mage or caster. Be sure to select the Golden Seed as Keepsake. For this early game build at level 40, you want to have your attributes spread like this, concentrating more on intelligence, mind, and vigor. We have vigor at 24, mind at 20, endurance 9, no points there, strength 8, I didn't put no points in strength, dexterity 12, again, no points there, intelligence at 30, faith at 7, no points in faith, arcane at 9, no points there. Let's talk about the weapon you need. The first and the most important thing to do is to get the main weapon called the Meteorite Staff. It's located in Kaelid, that's the map east of Limgrave, your starting zone. It will take a few minutes riding your horse to get to its location. You just need to follow this route east starting from the Warmaster Shack in North Limgrave. Just follow the road east until you get to Kaelid and keep following the main road south until you get to the middle of the map to Aeonia Swamp's short side of grace to reach the Street of Sages ruins where you can find the staff, as you can see it in the map. This staff has S-Scaling for intelligence, making it a pretty powerful weapon early on for a caster. For that reason alone, this staff is not upgradable like regular weapons. But no worries, because the damage output is superior than other staffs in early game. It increases damage of gravity spells, so we need to get a gravity spell for this build, and we're in luck, because nearby, where the staff is located, you can obtain the Rock Sling spell. It's a gravity spell that casts three rocks from the ground, launching them at enemies, doing great damage. You can also obtain nearby the Perfumer's Traveling Garb armor set that you can use as well if you like, but it's a little worse than the Astrologer's set. There are three armor sets that are at the disposal early game. First is the Perfumer's Traveling Garb set that you can get in Kaelid, where the Meteorite Staff is located. Next is the Sage set located in South Liurna of the Lake on the Stillwater Cave. And last is the Fire Monk armor that is farmable in West Liurna of the Lakes, killing the Fire Monks for the pieces. The armor that I'm using on this build is a combination of those sets, selecting the pieces that had more resistances and look good. Early game, you won't have much talisman slots, but the most important talismans can be found in Lyurna of the Lakes. The first one is Radagon Icon that will increase spellcasting speed, and second, the Grave School Talisman that will increase spell damage. Both are found in Raya Lucaria Academy. For the Physics Flask, we need the Opaline Bubble Tier, dropped by the Earth Tree Avatar boss in the Weeping Peninsula, and Intelligent Knot Crystal Tier, found in North Lyurna of the Lakes in this area of the map on an altar. So that's it for the early game build number three. If you like casters, this is the build for you and can turn into a very powerful build similar to the mage build I have for endgame that kills enemies in seconds. Check the upper right corner for the link to that video. 
Now, at number two, this is a colossal strength build that focuses on using the heaviest and biggest weapons and armor in the game. This build revolves around two-handing a colossal weapon and using the Ash of War Lion's Claw. It does massive damage and can obliterate enemy stands super quick, leaving them open for critical hits. This build takes a bit more attribute points to complete uh, because of the requirements of the colossal weapon and getting into medium load since it carries a lot of weight with the colossal weapon in the heavy armor. But once you get it, you can use Lion's Claw as a war or jump attacks, running attacks, successive attack, you name it. It's going to stagger the enemies and do massive damage. You want to have a couple of FP flasks to summon and also to keep using Lion's Claw on boss fights. So how do you create this powerful build? First, you will start the game selecting the Vagabond or Hero class because he has more strength and dexterity than the others. And those are the main attributes to starting to use a Colossal Weapon early game. Be sure to select the Golden Seed as Keepsake. For this build, I chose a Hero class. For this early game build at level 40, you want to have your attributes spread like this. Concentrating more on strength, dexterity, vigor, and endurance to get to medium load. I have vigor at 20. After level 40, you gotta put more points into it. Mine at 10. Endurance, 16. Strength, 35. Dexterity, 12. Intelligence at 7. No points here. Faith at 8. No points here. Arcane, 11. No points here. The weapon that we want to two-hand is the Great Sword. With great strength scaling with high attribute requirement, infused with Lion's Claw Ash of War, costing 20 FP and does a forward jump that does great overall damage. So where to go to get this weapon? From the starting area of Limgrave, you want to ride your horse to Kaylee, that's the map to the east. So you want to follow the main east road from Warmaster Shack until you get to this part near Kaylin Ruins. It's inside of a chest in the back part of the Broken Black Carriage. Gotta be careful because it's surrounded by enemies. Your best bet is to grab it and die or trying to run if possible. So while I got the build to 31 strength and 12 dexterity to use it, I had to use a sword and shield build that it looked like this. I won't go into much detail about it because this can be a full game build in itself. It had a long sword's great sword with flame of the right main Ash of War and a good 100 physical negation shield like the Beast Crest Heater Shield or if you get the Brass Shield even better. Early game, one of the coolest armor is the Caden armor set. I'm using the helmet and the chest piece, also using the foot shoulders, gauntlet, and exile grief. If you choose the hero class, like I did, you need to change your armor set as soon as possible. It's pretty bad. It has low poise and low resistance. The heavier the armor, the better. Apart from the colossal sword, the arsenal charm talisman is one of the most important parts of this build. It will let you raise your maximum equipment load to use the sword with heavy armor. But early game, you'll need to put some points in Endurance to be able to equip both. The second talisman is the Green Turtle Talisman that will raise stamina recovery speed. It's found in Summer Water Village, northeast part of Limgrave. For the Physique Flask, we need the Opaline Bubble Tear, dropped by the Earth Tree Avatar boss in Whipping Peninsula, and the Strength Not Crystal Tear that boosts your strength, found in North Luna of the Lakes in this area of the map on the floor. And that's it for the early game build number two. If you like to smash things, this is the build for you and you can turn it into a very, very powerful build similar to the strength build that I did for Endgame as thumps and kills enemies with ease. Check the upper right corner for the link to that video. And the number one early game build and possibly the most popular is the dual Uchigatana bleed build. This is the start of a great late game bleed build you can start attacking, doing a jump attack, and then finish them off with a combination of attacks using the left bumper, taking advantage of power stance in combo. Your successive attacks will be so fast that regular mobs will get staggered and won't have a chance to counter. But heavier or enemies that have the skin as rock will be a little harder because you can't stagger them easily. This build uses the Ash of War Quick Step to get out of the way quickly and is safer than a roll. Also for bosses, we have the early buff combination of Golden Bow with the Incantation Flame Grand Mist Strength that will increase the damage by a fair amount. So you need to start the game selecting the Samurai class because it has high dexterity plus endurance and start with the great katana called Uchi Katana that afflicts blood loss to enemies. For this early game build at level 40, you want to have your attributes spread like this. Concentrate more on dexterity and vigor and little of faith to be able to use flame grant me strength incantation. Vigor at 20, mine at 11, no points there. Endurance at 14, strength at 12, dexterity at 30, intelligence at 9, no points there. Faith at 15, arcane at 8. 
No points there. So to complete this build, we need to obtain a second Uchi Katana to be able to power stand. You can get a second one in Death Touch Catacombs in North Lingrave. The Uchi Katana scales really well with a B in Dexterity using the Keen Affinity. Each one has 45 blood loss buildup and the main hand weapon has been infused with the Quick Step as a War found in a vendor in Warmaster Shack North Limgrave. We use a dagger to use the Golden Vow Incantation that gives around 12% increased damage and a finger seal obtained in Round Hole Table from the Twin Maidens to be able to cast incantations. In this case, Flame Grimy Strength that gives 20% physical damage. Golden Vow Ash can be found in this part of North Limgrave defeating a knight that's in a horse. And to get the Flame Grammy String Incantation, you need to go to Fort Gale and loot a corpse behind the castle, and it's surrounded by two big mechanical flamethrowers. So the armor for this build, in early game, there isn't a good samurai armor, uh, so you can use the default one that is very good. On this build, I'm using the Claw Talisman that increases jump attacks. You can obtain it in Stormvale Castle. And the second talisman is the Winged Sword Insignia that will increase attack power depending on how much consecutive hits you land. It has three tiers and will increase it by 3%, 5%, and then 10%. Another option is to obtain the Green Turtle Talisman that will raise stamina recovery speed found in Summerwater Village, northeast part of Limgrave. For the Physique Flask, we are using the Green Spill Crystal Tier that temporarily raises max stamina. It's found on an altar in Mistwood, that's the east part of Limgrave, and the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tier that boosts Dexterity, hence your damage with your Uchi Katana that scales with Dexterity, found in an altar on a small island in South Lurna of the Lakes. If you use this build, you will create one of the most OP builds right now in Elden Ring, and those builds are the Bleed Build that can kill bosses in seconds. You can check my endgame bleed build on the upper right corner so you can see for yourself what kind of monster is this build and how can you create it and dominate this game. So that's the top three early game builds that will make you OP early on and will let you create an even more powerful version late game with improvements on your gear. So if you're new to the game, try one of those depending on what playstyle you like. If you like a caster, if you like a, a melee with the colossal weapons or you like, you know, power stancing and bleed type of build. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to not miss any of my Elden Ring builds and content. So if you have any questions or comments, please share them down below. As always, guys, be safe and see you on the next one. Ciao!